All right, guys, well, I'm back today with a very quick overview of the Ruger LCR chambered in 22 mag. If you follow the channel, you'll know I've done a review on some 22 mag revolvers here recently because I feel like these are an interesting option for a backup gun or a personal defense gun for somebody who is ultra recoil sensitive but wants something a little bit more powerful than a 22 long rifle. I feel like something like this is incredibly compact and the LCR seems to be a very solid and good performing revolver, especially at the price. Again, this one was chambered in 22 mag and unfortunately it seems like this one comes in a little bit higher than the standard 38 special chambering of the Ruger LCR. The Ruger LCR is a proven revolver that's been around for a little while, but this is my first example on the channel of any LCR. So I do have some opinions about the platform in general, as well as this chambered in 22 mag. I picked this one up from guns.com used, and I always love going to guns.com. A lot of their used guns, if you search through, you can find yourself some pretty good deals. And they also have a make and offer feature and sometimes free shipping options, depending on what's going on. If you go over to my 704 Gear Facebook page, you'll be able to find some of the best deals I post over there, as well as my 704 Tactical MeWe page. If you don't like Facebook, they value privacy and freedom a little bit more. Again, some of the best used guns make and offer features over on both of those sites. So I also want to give a huge shout out to American Pawn and Gun located in Monroe, North Carolina for doing the transfer on this. If you guys are in Monroe, North Carolina, they've got great transfer rates, a ton of new guns and used guns, and they're a great place. Tell them 704 Tactical sent you over. And again, if you're in Monroe, swing by, check them out. The Ruger LCR is kind of made famous because a lot of this is a polymer framed revolver with a more steel upper. One of the first things I noticed right out of the box was this kind of looks funky a little bit but a lot of those funky features make it a very ergonomic gun it's got a shrouded or concealed hammer which is perfect for concealed carry inside your pocket or if you're carrying it off body in a purse or something like that i know that presents a lot of challenges but it won't snag because it doesn't have a hammer on the back the sights seem fairly rudimentary but you can acquire them reasonably well you could always put a little bit of front paint on there uh, one thing to also notice about this revolver let me show you guys that it is unloaded. You hear a rattle, and I believe that is the transfer bar and a few other things going on in there, and that is perfectly normal in the LCR, but if you pick one up for the first time, it could be disconcerting. I also noticed the front sight was really wobbly, excessively wobbly, but I also heard that LCR front sights generally are a little bit wobbly. I popped out the roll pin. I added some Loctite or super glue to that, I pressed it back on over the post, redid the law, I repounded in that roll pin, and then with a tapered punch, I flared out both of the ends, and now that front sight is rock solid, definitely not coming loose. A little tip or trick for you right there. Now, specifically for this version, I like the fact that this rubberized grips are really nice and they fill up your hand very comfortably and they would absorb recoil if you were shooting maybe the 38 Special version with Plus Plea or the 357 Magnum version. I feel like those rubberized grips are incredibly ergonomic and they do suit the pistol well, although they kind of get snagged up in your pocket when you're drawing, unlike maybe some less diameter rubber that would slide out of your pocket a little bit easier, something to consider. Now that I've got this loaded up with dummy rounds or snap caps, we can take a look at the trigger pull. Normally I would do that without loading up snap caps, but on this particular version of Rimfire, you do want to put snap caps in there. So what you guys have is a little bit heavier uh, trigger pull than, I don't know, some other Smiths that I've tried. 
Um, but it is fairly smooth. It hits a point where it kind of overcomes a cam wall and then it breaks. And then you guys can see the lockup has a little bit of slop in there. Um, but again, it's like a 22 mag kind of personal defense up close pistol. Uh, the lockup is reasonable for what it is. Um, to drop the cylinder, or release a cylinder, instead of sliding or pulling back, you actually push this forward or push it in, and now you're allowed to or can kick out your shells the normal way. Uh, these little snap caps are kind of funky. They don't want to come out of there, but it does eject the shells just fine. Uh, let me try to get this one out, and then we will continue the review. Like I said, these little red ones are kind of funky. Uh, something to consider, though, on this 22 mag version, it only holds six rounds, where the 351 PDs and stuff like that from Smith hold seven rounds. I don't know why these guys didn't make this hold a few more rounds. I feel like that would have been a much better option if you could hold more rounds. A lot of people not only go to the 22 mag for a light recoiling gun, but because they want a larger capacity than the standard five shot 38 special. And I feel like this kind of lets you down in the capacity. Uh, but everything operates as it should. When I took it down to the range, it fairly, I shot fairly accurately at about uh, seven to 10 yards, uh, about 10 yards, small fist size groups with this trigger and sight setup. I can't complain at all. You're definitely gonna hit what you're aiming at at personal defense distances. The recoil was non-existent, even though this is a lighter weight gun. It felt incredibly comfortable in my hands, and I feel like if you're okay with a 22 mag for personal defense, this is a great option, other than the fact that I wish it had more rounds in it. Now, I know this is gonna be a controversial video, and I generally recommend carrying nine millimeter at the smallest, for me anyways, or if I'm gonna do a pocket carry, I do, if I do go really small, I do the 32 ACP out of the Beretta Bobcat. I never carry a 22 mag as a primary carry, but I do think if you're ultra recoil sensitive, either a 22 mag or a 32 auto are good options. And I think the Ruger LCR is pretty overall decent for what you're gonna pay for it, especially if you can find one used in good shape like I did this one from guns.com. Hope you guys liked the video. Hope it gives you another option for a potentially a backup gun or a concealed carry for somebody who's incredibly recoil sensitive. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.